Why are you so important? Somewhere out west. They're working on a cure. I think what really impressed them was the fact that I didn't turn into a monster. If she so much as twitches. <laughs> don't. <laughs> First of all, uh, Bella, Pedro, congratulations on the series. It is literally incredible. I just spoke to Craig and one of the things he remarked on is he knew the chemistry between you two had to be great and he said it was instantaneous. I'd really love for you to talk about when y'all kind of knew that this was gonna work the way it did in the game and if there was any aspects of the relationship in the game that you thought would be key to what you guys were doing in this one. Great question. Um, well, yeah, we just we met for the first time just as I was getting my haircut and you just come off set. It was a very like brief meeting. We didn't have like time to get to know each other. And and but yeah, the chemistry, it was just immediately this bond, unspoken like connection of like we're both embarking on this huge journey together, like as Joel and Ellie, but as two people as well, like suddenly we have, we're spending a year together in Alberta, Canada, like not knowing what the hell we're doing. And we're just like having to trust the, trust the process. But you know what I mean? Like it, it really was that. Um, I feel like there was all of this kind of like little unspoken relationship developing even before we got to Canada. Yeah. Actually. Like little, like, you know, we started following each other on Instagram and mm -hmm. starting to kind of like, I don't know. I feel like sending little signals, I, uh, little little signals to to one another, kind of, you know, shyly. Then, but but the 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 excitement and the anticipation was obviously so clear. Mm -hmm. And then I guess to a, a, a avoid the pressure of of what it would mean for this to work between the two of us, we just were as casual as we could be you came in for to get your hair cut uh, i was shooting and then we and then the next and then the first time we were together i was like throwing you up against a wall yes and um sure. and holding a gun at you uh -huh. um and i'm like hey what's up <laughs> <laughs> called me oh, several times oh, several times in the show in the script, obviously in the in script, script darling Absolutely. Um, I will say I would have said that you two bonded over being fan favorite characters on a little show elsewhere. I, just saying part like of the element, you know, exactly yeah. I watched the show before I got on that show and continued to watch it after I departed and was able to meet and fall in love with Lady Mormont um, like everyone else. So, yes. I was a little fanboy. Don't oh. even tell, don't even say that you watched my season. I didn't. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> I do know you get your eyes like squished out. I get my teeth punched out, <laughs> my eyes squished in, and my head. You might like it based on what you said. I don't want to get out of here though without getting this in there really quickly. I know both of you were not maybe like diving into the game like I was and playing it two times through, but you have to know what the clicker scene means. Anybody that knows anything about that and having that in the trailer, what was it like for you guys? How much did you know what you were going up against would look like? Did they do that practically or did you really just have to imagine it? It was all practical. It was very practical. It was too practical. Very practical. Um, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't, um, I knew that they were going to pull something really brilliant out of the hat as far as that was concerned, mm -hmm. but I didn't expect it to be as real looking on the day. And, um, and, and, and some things sometimes you know the opportunity for everything to be at your disposal in that way and to to immerse you into the experience to 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 shoot the story but sometimes some things are better left to the imagination uh -huh. because that was very <laughs> that was about as disturbing as her birth <laughs> i giddy up giddy up they looked really <laughs> scary I they were scary in the show. What are you talking about? It's like it's it's very scary on the show. I know we're used to it, but it's not like it's less. Also, Pedro, I definitely want to talk about this because I just think it's really cool that, you know, whatever with Mando protection. I mean, there's a little solo man on a mission, maybe cutting himself off from the world. Is this you therapizing on screen? I'm just curious. There's a this I mean, is, it's too similar not to at least remark on it. I guess it is, you know, <laughs> I didn't even realize it until now, really. Um, it is like the 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 most uh, the most special double dip that I could possibly uh, 
have experienced um where where they are so similar and so different mm-hmm. and 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 it's just been like amazing to step into those shoes and that armor i'm taking you with me do what i say when i say it. got any advice on the best way west yeah go east Merle, Neil, it is great uh, to see you all. I will say that uh, you already have a debt of many of my hours as I played the game (laughs) way too many hours for way too long. But I'll start with you, Neil. Um, You've said that the show allowed you to include a lot of things that you couldn't and maybe do some things that maybe at the time of the first game or even in the remaster you couldn't. Talk about some of these new places you got to explore with this different medium. I, I, the big, the biggest difference, I think, for me is in the game. One, the game has to support a lot more action, I think, than is required in the show for the sake of gameplay, right? You have to, there's a certain mastery that comes with the game that once you do have that mastery, there's this bond you feel with the playable character that's very unique to games that we knew for that's the strength of the game, and we shouldn't try to replicate that in the show. So with the show, what we can do is leave Joel and Ellie's perspective and really focus on these other characters and get to flesh them out. And by fleshing them out, it makes their interactions with Joel and Ellie that much richer. So for example, like we get to see Marlene, what what is she struggling with, right? Because um, there are certain goals that she wants that are has an inner conflict with what she feels is right and wrong. And she has to sacrifice her own morality to kind of achieve these goals. Um, likewise, there's all the like the character of David and like these other things that um, we get to show the humanity of the antagonists, quote unquote. Again, there was no real villain in this story. There's just people with competing goals. And then there are some other just like other stories that uh, were written since the game has come out for different projects that for, for one reason or another didn't didn't happen that, um, you know, when Craig and I started talking about the story and kind of breaking it down, I mentioned some of those to him and he was just wide eyes and like like a fan, he was excited, like, oh my God, we got a visual, we got to put these on the screens, we got to get them in the show. And you got to see in the, the trailer we just put out, um, Ashley Johnson plays Ellie's mom. Um, and that was one of those stories that um, was very near and dear to my heart and I'm so glad it finally like gets to live. Oh, I love that. Uh, Meryl, I will say, uh... I actually have listened to you and the, the character embodies so much of your physical uh, representation as well. But I know that when you put on the wig, um, from what I heard from Craig, it was a real emotional moment for you because although you voiced this character for literally, you know, several, several years going on almost a decade, that was the first time you felt in it. Is that true? Yeah, well, you know, and I will t- take one more step back, which was my costume fitting, which um, as soon as I walked in, I was, I, you know, saw the the mood boards and I saw the choices and, and was not prepared for how I was going to feel when I actually put the clothes on for the first time. And it, it just felt like worlds colliding. I was like... <sighs> What's happening? Neil, look at this picture. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I was, it was really um, a, an unbelievable moment. And then to step, you know, even further and, um, you know, yes, put on the wig and, and, and see the, the, the full situation, the uh, completely fleshed out in front of my eyes was remarkable because I've been on such a long emotional connected journey with her for a decade now. Again, there's so many moments I think of. I'm just thinking of like some of the mo- mocap bloopers that you guys have done, singing <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. I'm like, I've gotten all the Easter eggs, but in the end, it's still, no matter whether it's the game or the TV show, it's these two characters. And I would say for both of you, seeing another person reimagine what these characters are, it's almost maybe an uncanny valley. What was something, Neil, that you saw watching Bella and Pedro's interpretations of the characters that maybe felt brand new to you. I'd be really excited to see something that they brought that you hadn't seen before. Yeah, it's, it's such a privilege. You know, I get to work with such amazing artists and, you know, give them this material that um, is inspiring them and they get to interpret it, they get to internalize it, and then we get to see what comes out on the other side. That uh, it's, it's hard maybe to articulate those differences. There's definitely differences, but like, uh, like Pedro is so charming 
And he has to suppress all that when he's Joel. And then you get to see these moments where it like kind of peeks out. And when he smiles several episodes later, it feels like a set piece, like an actor, like it's such a reward for like people that have invested the time in this relationship. Likewise with, with Bella, <clears throat> like, I feel like we, you know, we got lucky twice with this, with this, with these casts of like Ashley Johnson was able to capture Ellie so well. And then you have another person that's interpreting them. And at first, like, there's a resistance, like there's a fear that they're not going to do as good of a job or it's going to be too different. And I, I just, I, my mind just keeps going back to, you know, I was, my Batman was the Tim Burton Batman. And I think of Jack Nicholson as the Joker. I'm like, in my mind, that is the Joker. And I remember when I heard like Heath Ledger was cast as a Joker. I'm like, there's no way in hell Heath Ledger is going to do as good of a job as Jack Nicholson. And he did. It was different. And they were both the Joker. And that's kind of like how I view this. It's like Ashley Johnson is Ellie and Bella Ramsey is Ellie. Um, and it, it really kind of like now there's like a clear separation. It's almost like I can see two dimensions and they're both really true and honest as those characters. You've come this far and you know what's out there. You're not going to scare us. Scared him? Craig, uh, congratulations on the show. As a fan of both the uh, video game and now this, you should be so incredibly proud. But I would say having watched this and also having watched Chernobyl, let me just say, you really love people in desperate situations. I do. Uh, <laughs> so is that what brought you into this? Or were you, I would love to love the idea of you just being like playing the game, being like, you know, this might make a good show. That's exactly what happened. I mean, I do love people in desperate situations. I think desperate situations show us who we really are. But what what happened was exactly the way you put it. It's 2013, I'm sitting on my couch. I'm like, ah, all right, I'll play this game. It's got monsters, whatever. And I get through the first 10 minutes, and I'm stunned and I'm crying and I don't understand what just happened. And then that just carries through. And I was just, I was obsessed. And I, I actually remember feeling sad that I was probably never going to get a chance to like make a Last of Us show <laughs> you know, and like meet Neil and work. And then here I am now, like, what a dream come true, you know, for a fan. It's so it's so funny talking to you because I listened to your podcast for Chernobyl and then again in this. You're such a bubbly person considering the stuff that you write about in some respect or the more recent work, I should say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I maybe I don't know, maybe it's after you go through the trials and tribulation of a show like this, because adapting a video game is already a hard thing to do. And then when it's a game that, you know, arguably people say is like the best video game ever. Like, mm -hmm. was that it? The idea of bringing it to a new audience? Like, like what, what was the, the main draw once you actually started adapting it through? Well, I think initially what I was just driven by was how much I loved it. Mm. But also I could see how The Last of Us, the, the game experience was kind of begging to, to be this other version, you know? I love playing the game, but it, you could see how it, it was almost like wanted to be a television show a little bit, you know? And thinking about how to do that was so exciting and doing it with Neil was the best because Neil was incredibly flexible and brave and, and had no problem like stress testing everything and how could we make it better and how could we expand it? But also I knew like I was never gonna be able to do anything that like broke The Last of Us because I got Druckmann next to me. That's not happening. <laughs> so, you know, the two of us were like this together the whole way through and just like, I don't know, it was just a joy to fill that world out and, and give everybody the things that I would desperately want to see and then more. I love how it was the two of you really sort of locked in behind the scenes because obviously we know The Last of Us, it's right there from the, you know, the the game poster, the game cover, now also the cover of this one. Yep. What was the dynamic between Pedro and Bella that you saw that you really wanted to translate to the game? Because there's a lot that you could play up with these characters and even I would even say how you cast them in this mm -hmm. version. Well, we were looking for people that we felt just embodied the soul of Joel and Ellie. And we got those people. 
for sure. We had no question about that. But then it was sort of like, well, but what will they be like together? And mm. that's where kind of luck happens because they bonded so fast and so profoundly. I mean, they are like a unit. You couldn't tear them apart if you tried. They love each other and 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 we love them, you know? We wanted to replicate for everybody, whether they had played the game or not, the experience of a man who was closed off and broken, just opening up, even you didn't even realize it's happening, opening up and letting this love back in, which is a dangerous thing to do. And we also wanted to feel the ache of this girl who is lonely and lost and has never had a family, has never had belonging and has never been protected or cared about like this. We wanted to see that coming through and they just delivered it in the most beautiful way. Playing The Last of Us means you're going to cry. Watching The Last of Us means you're going to cry, but it, it kind of feels good. You know, mm. it kind of feels good. It's just because Pedro and Bella made it true. And, and the, what else can I ask for as somebody making a television show? Wow. I mean, I love what they did. Obviously, they made it so authentic. But before I get out of here, I couldn't not talk about Troy and obviously Ash. I mean, it's just the fact that you guys were able to bring them into this and then like have uh, that dynamic be a part of this at this, you know, however many years later, but also especially with, particularly with Troy, but with both of them, they've become such icons in the video voice game world. It's almost weird seeing them not the way we are right. used to hearing them. Yeah. It's yeah, almost it's, well, What was that like for you? Troy's, Troy's the really weird one because he's been 400 people and he looks like none of them as far as I'm concerned. There is like, you can see Ashley's face and Ellie, particularly in the new versions of Ellie. Um, I mean, obviously I'm deeply connected to their performances. I love them and they're both just the most beautiful people. And I loved having them on set and and their, their eyes looking around. I mean, remember Troy walking around going, oh my God, I'm in it. It was so <laughs> like moving for them. And, and don't forget Merle Dandridge who plays Marlene. She's the one person who, was the same character in the game and in the show. Yeah. Marlene has this great kind of like gray streaked hair, but Merle, her hair is perfect. <laughs> so, you know, we're working with a wig. She gets this wig on and just starts bawling just instantly because she's like, it's I'm Marlene, I'm, it just happened. you like, yeah. so having those touchstones of people that did the game and, and were with us and working the show and telling us that we were getting it right and that we had casts well, and that Bella was amazing and Pedro was amazing. It just meant everything to me, everything. You have a greater purpose than any of us could have ever imagined. Be careful who you put your faith in. You might not be her father, but you were someone's. One thing I will say is, look, Tess is a bona fide like action hero uh, in her own right. Is that something that really drew you towards it? Like this sort of shade of it? Because man, you guys really take it in this series. <laughs> yeah, of course. That and working with <laughs> Pedro Pascal. Um, yeah, it's always fun and you kind of, because I'm not really like that, but um, I'm always surprised at how I'm like, oh, like I'm shocked when I go, Oh, I buy that <laughs> when I see myself doing something. I'm like, well, I bought that. I'm like, well done, Anna. <laughs> yeah. They make me look good. Yeah, they do all this stuff. I don't really have to do anything, but I mean, you, are you, I will say this, you are believable in it outside of every moment. So I will take that all to you. But if you want to make it a team effort, make it a team effort. Uh, one thing that is not, a, is, is a dual effort is your chemistry with Pedro and just the whole test Joel of it all. If we will go ahead and say it for those of us that are fans of the book. Um, how did you guys talk about that part of it? I mean, obviously it seems like he was, part of that was the draw, but then you also have to like work it out and there's the actual getting it done and what you see maybe in chemistry tests has to then translate on screen. Well, yeah, we talked about it. And, and actually the first scene that we shot was the first scene that they were together. And there's not really that many moments, but we were adamant, um, Pedro and I, 
that we wanted I mean I would have liked to have made it a, I would have liked to have gone further but but part of it is that you've got to be true to the characters and um and we just went uh, we both wanted them to we wanted them to have been together for a long time we wanted them to like be incredibly loyal to each other we wanted them to be in a relationship in a partnership but as Tess and Joel like not it's it's Tess and Joel in a relationship in a partnership and then we went well how do we do it and you go because you don't want to over you don't want to overdo stuff too because over it's not the in character. exactly and it's sort of like when you when you agree on all of that stuff and you you know you're just a, there's an ease between them and the first time you see them Tess walks in the door jumps into bed with him he rolls over she puts her arm around and it's like the, that's you know then like the audience goes oh one of the things we got from the trailer is this epic clicking scene which I again even if you weren't me obsessed with the video games you have to know just how incredible that scene is can you talk about mm. sort of working up the choreo the choreography for that one because yes I know you guys have brilliant stunt performers but there's still a lot that goes into everything before after and sometimes during those those moments oh look then uh, uh, that was all choreographed and then we came in and 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 did it but I mean it was creepy because the actors playing um the clickers that's all them like the um, to the disjointed kind of like the the physicality of them. They had practiced and they did it for day. Like that was them. And also the, ah, ah, like all the sounds, that was all them in the room. And so that was my first experience of a clicker. And so that was frightening. <laughs> so yeah. that was all prosthetic. Most of that's prosthetic. And then these really big, tall, beautiful, like unbelievably, like just the, just the, the movement was nuts. They'd worked on it. They were amazing. And then the sounds, all of the sounds was them in the minute. So it was frightening. <laughs> it was really scary. Mm. Probably not hard to stay in character in a moment like that, because again, oh, they're difficult. terrifying in <laughs> just where we're looking at it on screen. Well, and then you didn't really want to talk to any of them. So you didn't meet, like I, we only met them out of the prosthetic like one time and then you kind of want to like hi like you just didn't want to look well but incredible they were in that for days I love it um last question here real quick because I will say this it's I guess scary in a good way scary how talented they are at their age but I will say uh Bella is just absolutely incredible in this and mm -hmm. I know that if there is any dynamic that folks are more interested in than the Joel and Tess, it's obviously what Bella and Pedro are doing with that, with their characters, with Ellie and with Joel. Talk about your chance to work with them and what Bella brings to the table as a young performer. Oh, it was really fun. I mean, I'm sure she'd say the same thing too, because I'm only in just the beginning of it and it's just Bella and Pedro. And so Pedro and I had worked together and it was kind of, we got to do it almost chronologically. So we kind of like had this thing and then it was really different. All of a sudden Bella came in and we were like, oh, this is a different vibe. And then in the same way it happens with the thing, Bella and I started to really get on and get the giggles together. And by the end, like we really all, we cracked each other up a lot. And I think partly part of it was because we were, you know, just, it was just, everything was so serious all the time. And you're constantly looking at this revolting fungus everywhere and like everything that we would, you just would, and one of us would go and then the other would go. I mean, the crew would be like, come on a lot of days. That's okay. Well, I think it reads. I think it reads that we get on. You trust me. I'm so excited to talk to you because I know you actually played the game. So mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm also a fan of the game. Well, I just have to ask as a fan of the game, knowing that you were signing on to this, besides the daunting task of doing everything you could with Tommy, was there anything you in particular were looking forward to, like Easter egg type stuff? You were like, okay, this is going to be cool when we do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There was, I, I, um, I wanted to see how we were going to recreate Austin, Texas in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, because I'm from Austin. And so I was really thrilled to see what we were going to do in terms of the uh, production design to uh, bring my entire home up north to, to Calgary. And it didn't disappoint. I mean, there was not only did it match uh, my experience and my what I know to be the authentic elements of my hometown, but 
it also matched the game in a really incredible way. So I was all over the place taking pictures of, uh, you know, movie posters or, or um, you know, certain buildings and certain kind of architecture and structures that all of the Texas Longhorn paraphernalia that was everywhere. So I think uh, that's what I was looking forward to and it didn't disappoint. I really love that. Um, I also love the Austin, Texas shout out. I'm, I'm also, I'm, I'm not an Austin born, but I was Austin bred. I went to school there and lived there many years. So I'm, oh, I also will say they did a very credible job, which is incredible, go. desolate Austin. But one of the things you did have to sort of create in whole cloth for this series is the bond between Tommy and Joel with your bond with Pedro. And I know that you guys had a fun set, but again, sort of playing brothers in this, the dynamic between these characters in the game is interesting. And you kind of like have to make that translate on the series, or did you guys want to explore it completely different? Well, we were in, we had different entry points because I knew the game. I knew the whole story. I knew the experience. He had, uh, he had watched a lot of the playthroughs and a lot of the cinematics on YouTube. So he was familiar with it. Um, so we, uh, but what we were dealing with was a superbly crafted script that Craig and Neil, you know, laid in front of us. We just, we need only stay true to the story and how it was unfolding in the script. I mean, a lot of the way that they, the, their, their, the tit for tat that brothers, you know, that, that brothers are, are apt to kind of engage in was there in the script. And I know it very well because me and my brother are only 22 months apart and we used to always, you know, knock heads. So all of that was very, very uh, easy to slip into because it was written written so well. But beyond that, he and I, both Pedro and I, were both raised in Texas. He was born in Chile, raised in San Antonio. I was raised in Austin. We just, we just thought that it was important that we just draw on that and lean into it and allow it to uh, inform our relationship. And it did, and it did in a very, it gelled in a very, uh, in a very quick way, which was important because we when we were when we were off and running we were certainly off and running so uh i just uh yeah i couldn't have asked for a better scene partner too he's so giving and so playful and and uh immensely talented the other thing i would really ask since you were definitely somebody that had the full experience of playing the game and really living in that is you were probably a little bit like the you know on set if you can't grab the technical advisor ask gabriel <laughs> that was it you're right about that um, did you put a lot of that expertise into the clicker scene? Because that has that's a that's a moment in the game that is just literally instructive. So so much just learning how to deal with them. Like that first attack from them is like one of the scariest moments in the game. Uh, did you sort of like circle that day and really sort of pay attention to how they they translated that as a gamer? Did you just let yourself be a gamer for a day with that moment? You know, we um, you you kind of prepare for it, and you know which 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 parts of the script are, are, are married to the game that you really love. And you're like excited. Okay. I'm going to can't wait for this. And, 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 but then you get there and, and you just forget all about that and your preconception of what it was going to be because of how, you know, it, it's, it becomes, uh, it becomes what happens, what happened with me, Pedro and Nico, what just happened in the moment. And uh, you're not really too concerned about uh, ap applying it point for point. You're, you're really just, Everything is there. It's constructed in a way that honors the game, and and uh, if you live in the moment, honestly, it'll you'll you'll have contributed the important part that you need to bring. And um, and so that was uh, that was yeah that was kind of effortless. But the but you're right. No, I was I was always called on to be uh, a bit of a, a technical consultant when it came to the game. Pedro would turn to me a lot. He's like, "Is this what happens in the game?" Just how I was like, "No, dude, this is exactly how it happens in the game." Or or no, we're doing this differently, you know? I really um, appreciate yeah. that. Um, one thing that, for at least when I saw, I didn't get to see, there's lots of solo episodes, and I didn't get to a Tommy solo episode. So are we going to get one this time? Do you know? Can you tease you it? You have to watch and see. Yeah. Oh, come on. I see they, ta <laughs> they taught you well. They taught you well. 